is a very strange experience. I'm in the middle of the Indonesian jungle with a group of people and they're pet otters. Tokyo, the world's largest metropolis. Rich in tradition and densely packed with millions of inhabitants, Japan's capital is hardly the first place you'd visit if looking for wildlife. However, in recent years, a new phenomenon has swept through this concrete jungle. Animal cafes. The premise is simple. Pay a cover charge to sit in a cafe where it's possible to pet a number of cute domestic animals. But with more competition arising, there has been a disturbing shift to the use of exotic species as a way of winning customers. And one animal seems to be more popular than any other, the Asian small-clawed otter. Following World Animal Protection Research, I went to find out exactly what was happening with otters here in Japan. We've got one hour with the otters and you can pet some of the different animals in here and then you come outside and included in the price is this little bowl of otter treats. Do they stay in here all day? In this yes. cage over here? Yes. Oh, okay. Where did they come from? Japan. In Japan? Brida, yes. Brida. Oh, so they're bred. Yes. So then you got them. Thank you. How many do you have? Ota, three. Only three? Yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> Kept in a small plastic presentation box all day, these otters were living in a totally unsuitable environment for wild animals. I wanted to find out if that was true of all cafes. One of the things that you notice here is the stench. It absolutely stinks. And a lot of the otters seem pretty agitated. Um, and apparently they can be soothed with uh, cheese. Wild otters almost exclusively eat fish, whilst here they have no choice but to consume a totally unsuitable diet. Otters spend the majority of their time in the water, but here most don't have access to any at all, and it was clearly affecting their mental and physical well-being. And this otter has actually gnawed off part of its tail. I don't know if you can see here, but there's just a little bit of a nub remaining. And if that's not a sign of a distressed otter, then I don't know what is. Speaking to the staff, they told me where the otters were allegedly from. So they're a breeder? Breeder, yes. In Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And then you buy the otters from Indonesia? Yes. And they send them to Japan? The popularity of otter cafes has been steadily rising, but not all locations were quite as comfortable placing their animals on clear display. Thank you. You having fun? <laughs> hey guys. Oh no, no. Here you are. Here you are. Is that nice? Oh. <laughs> Alright, well this isn't weird at all. Uh, there's an otter spinning around on a string <laughs> and we're in the ground floor of an industrial building. I've only been in this small room for about 10 minutes with this music playing and I'm already starting to lose my mind. So imagine what it's like to be these otters who were stuck in here almost all day, every day. The popularity boom of otter cafes and otters in Japan is being driven by social media. Recent reports show that there are upwards of 750,000 otter-specific social media subscribers around the globe. The recent increase in the um, number of otter cafes that are popping up around Japan, as well as the amount of otters that are showing up on Instagram and becoming Instagram famous, is really driving uh, the pet trade and the desirability for wanting an otter as a pet. 
To find out what would motivate someone to want to keep an otter as a pet, I went to meet two of the world's most famous otters. They're like mini Tasmanian devils, just running around in circles, playing with all of their toys, playing with this beautiful young lady here. These guys might be the same size as a, as a cat. Very cute as well. But they're definitely not domesticated in the same way. Very rowdy. Why is it that your otters became such celebrities? America no Takecho ga shokuji o shiru shin are kara no eikyo de ninki ga deta to omotte masu. So what's it like having otters as part of your family? Well, but... Would you recommend, say, for example, I came to you and said I want to buy an otter? Would you recommend it or not? <笑>なぜならやっぱり噛みついてしまうのと家を壊してしまうからあと Despite otters clearly being loved nationwide, with wild populations declared extinct in 2012, where exactly were all these animals coming from? To help me find some answers, I was put in touch with an undercover investigator working for World Animal Protection. The only instruction I received Meet at Harajuku Station at 3 p.m. Now, you've just been involved in this uh, major operation about otters. Can you tell me a little bit more about what you learned? ほぼ全国っていうのはおかしいですけど、7割8割ぐらいのカワウソ関係のペットショップやカワウソカフェに行ってきたんですけれども、とても不思議だったことが、あの、そのカワウソさんたちがみんなタイやタイからタイやインド
other people love about otters? Well, first of all, they're adorable. <laughs> so, which is why everyone wants to watch them. And they also um, have this like unique human behavior in terms of uh, family bond. So we, if we see them, like we can always relate to ourselves. So you know that people like to keep otters as pets. What do you make of that? Bear in mind that they are a wild animal. So even though they are cute, but their behavior is wild. They're not like cats and dogs. It is wrong to keep otter as a pet. Otters are highly sentient animals that will stay in family groups for their entire lives. Their family bond is so strong that otters are even known to grieve. Kept as pets or in cafes, otters are deprived of this natural and incredibly important family dynamic. Whilst there may be no otter cafes here in Borneo, there is still a market for the animals as pets. So here, Leona has shown me that otters are definitely being advertised right here in Malaysia. Can't even walk. They've been taken away from their mother yeah. and now someone is trying to sell them essentially to a complete stranger. So he was saying that he needs to confirm it first with the indigenous people. So if there's none in the uh, stock, they will go and hunt it to get this for, for you. What do you think the chances would be of these animals surviving in the hands of a stranger? Someone who probably knows absolutely nothing about how to keep an otter? Oh, zero percent, almost zero. Is it exclusive to Malaysia that you can buy otters online? You can also get it um, in other countries, especially Indonesia. More than this, do you think? Yeah, more than Malaysia? definitely more than Malaysia, yeah. Maybe, maybe that has to be our next port of call. To Indonesia we go. Departing Borneo, I went to meet up with a unique community of pet otter owners on the rural outskirts of Jakarta. Okay. <laughs> Imagine if that was your toe. <laughs> that could have been your toe. Yeah. And what's it like having otters as pets? They are not just exotic. They are smart. They are uh, uh, really, really loyal, like a dog. And also, they are cute. So, people in the house can accept them as a exotic and a cute pet. Most of my friends acquired their otters from people who think that the otters are they a pest in their uh, village. They are so naughty that they will play in the rice field, in the paddy field, and make it a little bit messy. And the uh, farmers doesn't want to think uh, in a long term, so they just keep shooting it using air guns. Uh, after they shot the, these animals that they think it's a pest, they will find babies around. And this, those babies are sometimes being killed, sometimes being sold. And that's uh, where, ha where the people get the otters from. We make a program to mate them. Uh, and I, I'd say it's quite uh, good and uh, successful. It's, it's been more than five, six times. And I want to encourage more people to do this, to, so that, that people in next uh, decade, maybe I say, uh, it will be better for them to breed the otters and we, we are not going to hunt them anymore. It turns out that the farmers are upset because the otters will go and eat all of their fish or they will go and ruin their paddy fields. So they will get an air rifle. They will then go and stalk the otters They'll find the parents, they'll shoot them, they then take the babies and sell them into the exotic pet trade. But despite the good intentions, adopting wild orphaned otters is not a suitable solution to the problem. 
World Animal Protection Research found that not only are otters killed because they are considered pests, they are also killed specifically to sell the babies into the exotic pet trade. To see if I could track down a seller firsthand, I headed to the largest pet market in the country. But nothing could prepare me for what I found. A plethora of exotic animals sat in tiny, disgusting cages, distressed and sweltering under the hot sun. Oh. Look at this, like just baking in the midday sun. Oh, you can tell how much I'm sweating. Imagine what these poor guys are doing. Any kind of animal they can provide you. Yeah, if the price is right. Tiger, what? baby tiger. Baby tiger? No, no. white monkey. You can buy a baby tiger here so, in Jakarta. You know, that what country is. You can pay the police. You can pay for the authorities, okay? After a day spent surveying the pet markets of Jakarta, I was unable to gather any evidence of otters being sold. I had to find another way into the market. I managed to track down a local animal rights activist who was willing to help me. Good to go. Okay. How'd it go? It went well. There's a man who is a buyer from local people who want to sell any kind of animals. What you're looking for? A wild one or a tame one? Is it different? Yeah, because the wild one is cheaper. I text you later and we'll meet again tomorrow if you want. Uh, I said, can I send it to other city? He has exported otters he before. He has exported, not just other, any animals. I just don't get it. Why is it, as humans, that we think that everything is just here for us to exploit or enjoy? Just take otters as a small example. We rip them from the wild, we then take the babies, we keep them in our houses in habitats that are completely unsuitable for them, and then they're manhandled by humans for the rest of their lives. But the really sobering thing is that Otters are just one of thousands of species that are actually used in the exotic pet trade. And so in fact, they're really just the tip of the iceberg. What we've seen over the past few years is an increase in the amount of otter cafes that have popped up in Japan. It's very similar to the popular cat cafes that they have, but in this case, of course, they're using wild animals. Um, and that interaction with humans is really driving a false narrative that these animals are easy, that it's acceptable, and that they would make good pets. 
without access to water, without access to proper nutrition, and without access to the enrichment that they normally have in the wild environment. It is a lifelong life of suffering. What we're asking people to do and how they can help stop the global rise of the exotic pet trade is to simply not buy them and simply not accept that wild animals belong in our homes, wild animals belong in the wild.